2002 uh, when I was uh, 14 years old. Uh, this was kind of before indie was really like a buzzword like it is now. And at the time there was, there was no real like platform to um, put your work. Uh, it was kind of like a lot of hobbyist developers just kind of doing game development because they really, really enjoyed it. And yeah, so when you created your game, like what were you gonna do with it? How were you gonna actually get it? people to play it, how are you gonna get um, it out there, right? So at the time, people were just kind of um, putting it up on like forums and you'd have to like go and visit and try to find this stuff. But for gamers, it was kind of hard, you know? So yeah, I created um, kind of like the idea of a platform that anyone can put stuff uh, up on. So it was completely open for anyone to add their games. The idea was to kind of try to form like communities around uh, with gamers and developers in the same community, right? Because uh, with indie games, I think it's kind of interesting because a lot of the developers um, are gamers themselves, right? And they're just people, right? It's a very personal kind of experience. So if uh, we were all kind of forced almost to be in the same platform, same community, um, maybe we can work together to kind of like grow indie gaming and get more people playing games. That was kind of the, uh, the initial idea uh, when starting Game Jolt. So uh, what Game Jolt is today, what it has become is a open distribution platform and marketplace for indie games. And so we have uh, 90,000 published game pages on the site. Just last year we had 30 million unique uh, visitors to the site. And remember, Game Jolt's just for indie games. So this is just uh, people coming to find specifically indie games. Your game development process is the longest time that you have, right, of your entire game's life cycle. So you really should be using that time to uh, build your audience and you know, start a devlog, loop gamers in at the very, very early stage. Um, don't just waste that time. You should also, when you're sharing everything that you're working on, you should do it often because gamers want to see that your game is active, right? That it's being actively worked on. They don't want to follow and spend time on something if you yourself don't care about it. Communicate with them because these are your audience. And as an indie, the advantage you have is that you actually get to talk directly with the people that are going to be buying your games, right? So loop them in early, share as much of your progress as possible because they're interested. They wanna know what you're doing. I think we're gonna be uh, kind of reiterating this point and going over it again and again that um, one of the biggest unique advantages that indies specifically have is that uh, it's very personal, right? Like the indie teams are just people. Um, gamers are just people. Uh, and so when you're working on a game, right when you start at a, you know, you get your concept and maybe uh, kind of studio or team together to make the game. If you're interested enough to spend the next however many years of your life on your game, chances are that there's gonna be gamers out there that are also excited about that. Whereas AAA might, uh, you know, they have to go through all these lawyers, they have to go through uh, upper management, PR people in their studio to get their content out. Indies are just people, you can share whatever you want, whenever you want, right? So that the idea is to be posting as early as, I guess you're comfortable posting um, in your development process because you need all the, all the time that you can get to, um, to share your game with people, right? Because uh, you're not gonna be able to put in a ton of marketing money to just kind of spread your game everywhere. So when someone does find your game, um, you know, you want to capture them. And so if you have a development time of a year, two years, that gives you uh, way more chances to kind of bring people into the development cycle and uh, kind of turn them into fans, right? Um, and an actual community for your game that you're building. Your passion comes through when you're doing indie development, right? Because you have to be passionate, otherwise you wouldn't be doing it. It's freaking hard. Uh, it's not always fun. In fact, a lot of times it's not fun at all. So you clearly have to have, uh, you know, you have to be willing to suffer a very long time to um, kind of battle the, the industry to get your game out there and noticed and whatever. And the reason we do it is because we have passion for it, right? I think that passion actually 
comes out when you are um, talking with your fans, when you're showing your game off, when you go to events and you know, like the developers are actually there showing their game to users, to press, to whoever. It's a very like uh, personal kind of, um, you know, the love that you have for gaming and game development and creating something comes out very, very strongly. And I think it partly can do that because um, chances are you're, you're a much smaller team and studio than a AAA team, right? None of us know who actually works on the, the games uh, in the AAA world, right? It's usually just like, uh, here's the designer, you know, whatever, a few people. And then we're like, oh yeah, they made the whole game. They're awesome, I love them. Uh, it's all their work. Um, but you know, that's not true. You know, smaller teams though allow you to do other things too, I think. Um, one thing is that, uh, you know, you're indie developers, uh, you don't really have people telling you what to do. Um, so experiment, right? <clears throat> you can experiment with features in the game, you can experiment with other game mechanics, you can experiment with, you know, crazy storytelling. And I think this is touted a lot in the industry of why, why games are, indie games uh, can be different, right? It's because they can make like unique experiences. Um, but I think it's more than that. I think um, as developers, other developers working on cool things, right? Experimenting, trying out things, going to game jams, right? Um, and just making like a quick kind of prototype and concept in 48 hours. And I think we need to kind of bring these uh, experiences that developers feel in the community to gamers because um, it's freaking awesome. And even though they might not be uh, developers themselves yet, uh, I think it's still a very cool experience for them, right? And it feels very, very different than what they're used to. Um, which kind of, I think, kind of helps uh, the indie community out by um, showing that we have something really cool, you know? That they want to follow along with, that they want to actually, like, devote brain power to and, like, you know, consumption time to. The other kind of cool thing with stuff like that, like trying out new things that might even not be specifically for the game you're working on that they care about, uh, so like game jams and stuff like that, is that you know, they might be following your game, uh, games development for years, right? Uh, kind of seeing the same stuff being worked out. And if you can share with them what you as indies care about too, you know, like, oh yeah, we tried out this concept over here, you can try it out, it's free, whatever it kind of keeps it exciting for them to follow you as a studio too, right? Not just the game, but now you're making it more uh, personal for the people involved in the studio. And I think that's very important. Yeah, just getting them excited about indie games. I think, you know, that's the key point is to get them excited. You have tons of people that are part of your community that are that want to help you and that want to see your game succeed. So you've got gamers. There are some loyal fans out there, you know, uh, and they want to. They don't just want to consume your game anymore. They actually want to contribute to it. So use them to play test your games. If you've got you know uh, community stuff going on like contests or whatever, use them to. Um, manage your communities. So they, they really want to be a part of your process and it's definitely worth it for you to bring them in and uh, utilize them. So you also have Let's Players, right? So these people are indie too, they're just like you. Um, and they are building their own audiences and they want to promote your game to, you know, their audiences that they've put in a lot of effort to build. So utilize them because they are in your community. There's indie so many things right now, right? There's like indie curators, uh, journalists, publishers, uh, <laughs> distribution platforms. So know that you're not alone and these people are there to help you. So be everywhere. Uh, there are so many uh, indie platforms out there right now and Put your game up on all of them. They all get traffic. And even if you don't see sales coming through from the smaller platforms, it's still worth it because it's it's more like advertising then. You don't have the you know, you don't have an advertising budget the way that bigger studios do. And this is literally your, you know, 
way of getting your game out to as many platforms as possible. And realize that you have a better chance of being featured on the homepage and celebrated on these smaller platforms. So it's, it's definitely worth the time to upload your games to every platform out there, like every single one. <laughs> yeah, and I, I wanna make sure that like, uh, so we've heard often from developers that they feel like, you know, I put it on this platform over here and this platform over here and I didn't get many sales, so that was a waste of time, right? But um, really, you don't really know where gamers are gonna buy your game, right? They might see it on this platform over here and here, and later on you do a Steam sale and they recognize it from these platforms, so then they buy it, you know? So I would consider that even if you're not getting the sales, you don't know if gamers are buying it there. They could be buying it on a different platform that they're more comfortable with after seeing it there, right? Um, these are things that are pretty hard to track because they're all different kind of disconnected uh, platforms. AAA studios with you know massive, massive marketing budgets, the whole goal of that uh, when they're putting advertisements around is to, to get people to just see their brand, right? Their IP becomes a brand that they're trying to get gamers to connect to. That, so when a gamer sees that, they feel like this is content that I want, that I need, because clearly it's important. I see it everywhere, right? So this is kind of a way to, be, to have more of a chance to be able to sort of do that as an indie, right? Like uh, you might get featured on a platform that they might not make the sale even there, but it is a form of advertising for you to at least <laughs> look more important, right, on these platforms. Like they're seeing your game everywhere, so uh, your game must be big. Developers are not your target market, and that whole ecosystem is not sustainable. So go to, pl uh, go to platforms and use services that gamers use. Don't just share your uh, game development on Twitter and Tumblr, because that's probably not where your, the majority of your audience is at, and um, that's not where you go to find gamers. Uh, to summarize, involve your audience as early as possible and share your development as frequently as possible. So if you can take away one thing from our talk, that, that should be it. And since you don't have the resources that bigger studios have, you've got to think differently. And this goes into the advice to avoid, right? Um, things that worked for other people might not work for you in your situation in 2017. And again, respond to feedback, request feedback, talk to the people that are gonna be buying your games.